We are now to the portion of the lesson that is the quadratic formula. And so the rest of the lesson, we will be using this formula here. And as I mentioned in the intro video, and so in case you skipped that video, I want to reiterate here, this quadratic formula is the one-stop shop, right? Not everything is solved by factoring. Um, I showed you last video how we can't use the square root method when I get radicals. The square root method only applies if I don't have a B term, but this one will work no matter what. If it's not factorable, we use the quadratic formula. If we need a radical, use the quadratic formula. If you can't use square root method, use the quadratic formula. So if you want to just use the quadratic formula for every single problem, that's okay. And that will work for every problem. <clears throat> so here's our quadratic formula. And as you can see, it's not a, a small formula. It, it's a big one. But don't be overwhelmed by it because it's actually very, very easy. So we got x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now you're going to have a note card um, for my on-campus students. You're going to have a note card. So this is a great formula to put on your note card. For my online students, uh, you're going to be using your notes. So you don't need to really write this down. But, you know, back in the day, I had to memorize this. And so I still like to show this. Uh, the song can kind of go to the pop goes the weasel. So let's just turn it all up. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right, you guys ready to sing it with me? Just kidding. Okay, X is equal. Uh, you get the gist. So you can kind of sing it to the, the tune of The Pop Goes the Weasel. Uh, while I was found, searching for this, I found some really other funny ones. Uh, this one was hilarious. If you, uh, you know, are bored with your life and want to look up some quadratic song parodies. But this one, oops, I didn't mean to click on it, but it's really funny. And then there was another really funny one about uh, Bad Romance by Lady Gaga. This one right here, I don't think that one was necessarily funny, but that one was kind of interesting, but this one was pretty funny to me. But anyway, so you get the gist. There's plenty of songs that you can memorize the quadratic formula to. Now, the big thing with this one is you have to plug it in right, you have to simplify it right, and you've got to make sure it's in their correct form. So when we are using this, we still want to make sure it's in standard form. So you still want to make sure, first and foremost, that it equals zero. So this one here is in the right form. So here, I'm going to list out my A, B, and C. And so we already talked about in the very first, uh, I think it was actually still the, left, the intro video, that your A is with your X squared, your B is with your X, and your C is your constant. So here, if this is my quadratic, my A equals 1, my B equals negative five, and my C equals two. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my formula right here. I like to list my A, B, and C, and then write my formula. And now it is just substitution. Okay, so I have my A, my B, and my C. I have my formula. So substitute in everything. We have negative b. My b is a negative 5. So negative negative 5 becomes 5 plus or minus. Everything in here is going to get substituted in with parentheses now. So we have negative 5 squared. And this must go in parentheses. Because if you don't, uh, well, this right here, right? If you don't, negative 5 squared is negative 25, but when you put it in parentheses, it's positive 25. That's going to make a huge difference to this problem. So you have to make sure you substitute in specifically negative b's into parentheses here, but just do all of them and you don't have to worry about when to and when not to. But minus 4 times a, which is 1, <clears throat> and times c, which is 2, all over 2 times a, which is still 1. So 
Let's clean this up a little bit. We've got five plus or minus the square root. We'll figure out what goes under that radical. All over two times one is two. So let's use our calculator to figure out what goes under that radical. So we have in parentheses negative five squared minus four times one times two, and we get 17. Now, if I could simplify this radical, you need to, but 17 is a prime number. And so when you go to simplify the square root of 17, that's just one times 17. And so you don't have a pair of anything that comes out. So this is my answer. Now we're gonna use our calculator to verify this, but this is representing two answers, right? And we have a quadratic, it's an x squared. So more times than not, we have two answers. So my first answer is that x equals five plus the square root of 17 all over two. And my second answer is that x equals five minus the square root of 17 all over two. Those are my two answers, but we can write it as one. So let's go into our y equals and put in our equation. And then hit graph. And we can see our two x-intercepts, one here and one here. So let's go to trace and let's put this in. Now, I don't think in trace we can use our alpha y over d. No, we cannot. So we'll have to do 5 plus the square root of 17, close it, I think we can actually, n over d all over 2 right there. Let's see if that works. No, that doesn't. Okay, so when you put this in your calculator to check it, you have to tell your calculator that this is the top of your fraction here. So we will have to go trace five plus the square root of 17 all over two. And I forgot my first parenthesis here. Okay, so we're adding parenthesis and parenthesis around that whole thing. So let the calculator know that's the, that's the top. And there's my y equals zero. So doing the same thing here, parenthesis, 5 minus the square root of 17. I need one parenthesis to close that radical, and then a second parenthesis to close that uh, parenthesis at the front, and then divide by 2, and we get 0. And you can see now it's blinking over here, and that's our second. Okay, let's try again on part B here. Okay, and also for the record, we would have to use the quadratic formula here because if we started by factoring, my x would be a times c, which is two. My b term would be negative five. What adds up to negative five, but multiplies to two. Well, my only multiples of two are one times two and negative one times two, which adds up to three and negative three. So I have nothing here to meet that criteria of multiplying to our AC and adding up to our B. So I would have to use the quadratic formula here. So factoring is quicker when it works, right? It's not nearly as complicated as a formula, but factoring doesn't work every time. And so we have to know how to use this no matter what. So if you don't want to master factoring, you can just do this for every problem here. Okay, on B, we don't have this in the correct form. So I need to move this over and we're going to subtract it over since that's a positive eight. I'm going to go ahead and put this in descending order. So I'm going to put my three X squared first plus five X and we're subtracting eight over, so minus eight. Okay, from here, let's list our A, B, and C. So my A is three, my B is five, and my C is negative eight. 
You can see here, if you list your A, B, and C, your C is going to have the wrong sign. So you do need to make sure you get it in the right form here so all of our signs can be, can be right. So now I'm going to write my formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So I have my equation in standard form. I know what A, B, and C equals. And now I have my formula. This is just substitution. Negative B, my B is positive. We have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of B squared. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in parentheses. But this does not really matter if it's in parentheses or not. It matters when that B is negative. But just do it every time, and you don't have to worry about when do I do it and when do I not. Times 4, or minus 4, times a of 3, times c of negative 8, all over 2 times 3. So cleaning it up. I've got negative 5 plus or minus. I know I'm going to have the square root. We need to figure out what goes under it. And then 2 times 3 gives me 6. So what goes under my radical here? So we have 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 8. And we get 121. If you don't know your perfect squares, you need to maybe try these every time. That is a perfect square. When I do the square root of 121, I get 11. So when I simplify this, we will have x equals negative 5 plus or minus 11 over 6. This does not become square root 11. It does not say square root 11 here. It says 11. So that comes out to a whole number because 11 squared is 121. That's a perfect square. Now, when this comes out to a nice perfect number, when you get a perfect square, you need to simplify this completely. You're not going to go into lows and say, hey, I need negative 5 plus or minus 11 over 6 yards of, I don't know, fencing, right? So let's, let's get some numbers here. This splits up to be negative 5 plus 11 all over 6, and negative 5 minus 11, all over 6. Negative 5 plus 11 is 6, and 6 over 6 is 1. Negative 5 minus 11 is negative 16, and negative 16 over 6 both divisible by 2, reduce to negative 8 over 3. When you get an answer that's got a perfect square, that means this right here, this quadratic, was factorable. You could have factored this instead of using this, this method. So it works even when it is factorable, but you have to use this when it is not factorable, right? So. Using our calculator, let's check our answer. And we have to put this in in this standard form right here. So I'm going to put in 3x squared plus 5x minus 8 and graph. I feel like we did something. Okay, I accidentally put a minus five instead of a plus five. So I'll say that will not match our answer. Okay, that one looks better. So okay, so to use trace, trace one gets me a y of zero, and there's my x intercept, and then negative eight divided by three a y of zero, and there's my second intercept. 